So we will now look at how a clavichord works. It has a very simple action. This is a key, which I've taken out from the instrument. And it's just one single piece of wood. We have a nice top here for playing purposes. And at the far end, you have a, a piece of brass, which is called a tangent. And at the very end, you have a piece of bone or plastic that uh, moves in a slide, a slot at the, at the further end. So <clears throat> when I press the key, this tangent reaches the two strings. There are always two strings on the clavichord for one note. And as long as I hold the key down, I have a sounding length of the string from, from the tangent over to the bridge. And as soon as I release, now we can't see it here on this one, but I could actually take this off and see. Here we have felt. So as soon as I release a key, the felt will dampen the, uh, the vibration of the string. <clears throat> so it, in comparison to a harpsichord where you pluck the string or a piano where you hit the string, on the clavichord, you have to stay in contact with the string for the duration of the note, because again, as soon as I let go, there's silence. Um, and it has a special quality that you can actually do a vibrato. So if I press a key and then I press again. I actually uh, pull so much energy into the string that, that it um, uh, works like a vibrato on a... Let's see if you can hear this. And this is used in music and um, also has a special notation. Um, so if you read Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach's um, treatise, he, he describes it, so he writes a slur and then dots underneath. That's the, that's the sign for the vibrato, which is called Bewung. In uh, German, actually, we use the, the, the German word. So let's see, put this back. Here we go. Um, and this is a duo clavichord, which is a very special creature. We don't know if there actually were any historic duo clavichords, <clears throat> but Joel Spielstra, my playing partner of many, many, many years, uh, he wanted to design an instrument that we could use together, because we have usually used two separate instruments placed like this in front of each other or next to each other. And uh, he had this idea and it was great that he actually went, went along and designed this instrument and had it built together with Per Amstani. So we now can sit and play the same instrument. It's one big box and it has beautiful uh, acoustical qualities because when I play, my soundboard board is over here, but my sound travels the entire instrument, his soundboard is over here and his sound travels the entire instrument. So especially the bass frequencies are moving through the entire instrument. And when we had recorded on this instrument, we discovered that because um, we didn't know this until we, we actually did a professional recording, that the bass frequencies move in the entire instrument and not just on your own side, so to speak. Furthermore, there's cloth or fabric here and uh, underneath there are gaps so the sound of this soundboard, the sound of that comes up here. So I can hear the other play very, very well. And the same thing on this side. So I, my soundboard is here. The sound travels up through the fabric so the other play can hear. And that makes the duet playing so much easier because you can really hear everything that you do. Uh, so our duet playing has really been, uh, become something completely different. But you can also work, work on it on your own, as I've done with this recording. So it works fine as a single instrument and it works beautifully as a duet instrument. <laughs>